A choice between three aims is great, and a choice between a hundred is devastating. Okay, so that's two things that happens when the unifying overarching theme disappears. But there's a third thing too, which is there's a relationship between scarcity and deprivation and value, right? And so if you are surfeited by a stimulus, let's say, or a resource, so you're overfed, as soon as you're not hungry, food is of no interest. If you're stuffed, food is nauseating. Now, you remember in the Exodus seminar, we covered, I don't remember if you were there for this, but I think you might have been. There's a, uh, there's a situation when the Israelites are out in the desert wandering around like demented slaves and bitching about the fact that they have no tyrant. They start complaining about the fact that they have, they don't have an, enough to eat. And God sends them like quails until they're literally coming out of their nostrils. Right, That's yeah. First they complain about the manna and then, well, they complain yeah. they're hungry and God sends the manna and then they say, we're tired of the manna, yeah. we want meat. And God says, yeah. you're going to have as much meat as you could possibly imagine. Right, here come, right, Here come the right. quails. God actually gets angry. And, and actually Moses, for the first time, gets angry at the people over their requests at this point. Right, well, and what happens is because they have an absolute surplus of what they hypothetically find desirable, it becomes disgusting. And this is, this is certainly the danger on the sexual front. So... We don't know, like we actually don't know how much deprivation is necessary for proper sexual function to make itself manifest, right? Is that you have to, and it doesn't take much thought to figure this out. It's a rare person who hasn't primed their appetite with hunger before a Thanksgiving feast, right? You don't want to have a plate of pancakes at five o'clock if you're going to have a Thanksgiving feast at six. And you might say, well, why not? Because more is better. And the answer is no. The right amount is better, and the right amount involves a certain amount of deprivation. And I think that's, I, I read this interesting article yesterday showing that women are more likely to lose romantic interest as a relationship progresses than men. I don't think that's the, that surprising. They're higher in trait neuroticism, so they're more likely to experience negative emotion. And then women are, have more their response to sexuality is more multidimensional than men because the risks are higher. In any case, one of the ways around that is for men and women in a marriage to stay apart from each other for periods of, these researchers looked at eight hours. If you get some distance, the desire reemerges. And then you were talking about novelty. And so this is pretty interesting too. So you said men will chase novelty in a sexual relationship. Well, I think part of, what is incumbent on married individuals is to figure out how to keep that novelty alive, right? So that means that each of them have to be transforming. And I think the best way to do that is in relationship to a spiritual pursuit. And then I think women also want novelty, but the novelty they're looking for in men is probably more multidimensional and performative, right? Because women are hypergamous and they they like men who are above them in the hierarchy of status, let's say, or ability, likely ability. And I think what women want are dis novel displays of hypergamous capacity, and that that is the novelty orientation for women in relationship to sexuality. Well, one of the things that's actually fascinating about this is that, biblically speaking, right, I mean, not to get into abstruse Jewish law, but I mean, this is actually right in the Bible, forget about the abstruse Jewish law, you write in the Bible, one of the one of the mandates is that for a period of at least one week out of every month, married couples are not supposed to have sex. Right? This is like right in the Bible. Um, right, right. And, and right, so that right. one of the purposes of that presumably would be to create the scarcity and the novelty that you're talking about. Because if you're married, then obviously there's tremendous availability of sex. I mean, contra every single weird public opinion out there, married people tend to have sex significantly more than than single people, and it is not particularly close. But Theoretically, the scarcity goes away, the novelty goes away, and then so does the romance. Yeah, yeah. And so well, the Bible literally says- Well, that's a danger says, anyways. That's a danger. Right, and so the Bible literally says, like one week out of the month, minimum, you're, you're toast. You can't, you can't do anything during this particular week. And I think that, again, there, there's a good rationalistic and there's a good way, I shouldn't say rationalistic, because there's a reason for it, but it's something that inherited, inherited wisdom over time is sort of the message of, of the Bible. And I, I think that that's, you know, the, not knowing why you do the thing, but you do the thing and then it works, is in some ways much of what we're talking about because that's 
The story of what works is the story, right? That's, that's what we're really talking about at the end of the day.